without objection. Um, Madam President, I, I think it's fair to say we've got uh, two really major problems that we are grappling with uh, here in this Congress. Um, more importantly, uh, people all across our country are grappling with them. First is an economy that's far too weak, it's growing far too slowly, if at all, and it's certainly producing far too few jobs. Uh, the latest data is uh, particularly discouraging on the job creation front, and until we turn this around and get strong growth, we're not going to produce nearly the number of jobs that we need. The second big problem that uh, strikes me as uh, very disturbing is the unsustainable level of federal spending and the corresponding deficits and debt that have mounted as a result of all that spending. Uh, spending since the year 2000, from 2000 to 2010 has doubled federal spending. Uh, from just a couple of years ago, spending was less than 20 percent of our total economic output. Today it's nearly 25 percent of our total economy, and that's just way too large, and that's unsustainable. All this spending has predictably led to huge deficits. We're running annual deficits these last couple of years of nearly 10 percent of our entire economy, really staggering in size, one and a half trillion dollars the last couple of years running. And the deficits, of course, are covered by issuing new debt. And so we have been accumulating debt on this uh, really a, a breakneck pace. And of course, all of this debt has caused us to crash into our debt limit. And we are now mired in this debate and this discussion and these ongoing very difficult negotiations over what to do about the fact that we have reached a statutory ceiling on the amount of money that the federal government is permitted by law to borrow, $14.3 trillion, a, a number that's really very, very difficult to grasp because of its sheer enormity. But there we are. We're at the limit. And uh, we've got to decide what we're going to do about it. I, I have to say I, I'm not impressed with where the current negotiations seem to be and where they have been. I, I think we have yet to see a plan from the President that lays out exactly what he's willing to cut in spending to put us on a sustainable path. The President proposed a budget. I sit on the budget committee. We looked at that budget. We had testimony about that budget. And uh, what we learned was it's not a, not a serious budget. It would continue with huge deficits and mounting debt didn't address any of the fundamental problems. And when that budget was on the Senate floor for a vote, the President's budget got zero votes. The President subsequently backed away from his own budget, but hasn't proposed an alternative. And unfortunately, my colleagues in this chamber, on the other side, have proposed no budget whatsoever. And so here we are, the world's largest enterprise, the United States government, preparing to spend this year, as we did last year, something on the order of $3.7 trillion without so much as a blueprint for how we're going to spend that, rules that would govern how it gets allocated in different categories, guidelines for where the revenue is going to come from, how big the deficit will be, none of that. We're simply proceeding along without a budget. And I have to say I think that is shockingly irresponsible. Now we go into these discussions about the debt limit and uh, Frankly, it's not clear to me that we're any closer today to a resolution than we were several weeks ago. So some of us have suggested a solution, suggested a way out of this impasse that I wanted to describe today, Madam President. And the solution that we're proposing is that we go ahead and raise the debt limit by the amount that the President has asked. Many of us are not particularly enthusiastic about that. Uh, but we acknowledge that failure to do so will, at some point in presumably early August, result in a considerable disruption and a partial government shutdown. It will not result in a default on our debt. And there are many, many of our ongoing expenses we could continue to cover from ongoing tax revenue, but it would nevertheless be very disruptive. And it's my hope that we'll never get there and that we will instead find a resolution. The resolution that some of us are proposing specifically Senator Mike Lee from Utah, who I credit a great deal for his leadership on this. Senator Lee and I have introduced a bill together with a number of other colleagues. I think we have 
over 25 co-sponsors in the Senate. And it's based on an idea which we call the cut cap and balance. We would agree to raise the debt limit by $2.4 trillion, as the President has requested, provided that we get ourselves on a path to a balanced budget. And by that, we see three pieces. Cuts in immediate spending, caps, statutory caps uh, in spending over the next few years, and a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution, which we acknowledge would take several years to achieve. But the point is that the combined effect of these measures would clearly put us on a path to a balanced budget, end the practice of running deficits, eventually end the need to raise debt limits because we wouldn't be issuing new debt. We would instead, as a government, be living within our means. If you ask me, this is a very reasonable thing to do, to suggest that the federal government ought to live within its means. Uh, it's reasonable for families. Families don't have any choice. They live within their means. Businesses have to live within their means or they don't survive. 49 of the 50 states have a requirement that they balance their budgets every year, and they find a way to do it. You know, this president wouldn't be the first Democratic president to embrace this if he were to embrace this idea. President Clinton, working with the Republican-controlled Congress in the 1990s, first embraced the idea that we ought to strive for a balanced budget, that it was a worthwhile goal, that it was an achievable goal, and within a few years, in fact, they achieved it. Two different parties working together, not always enjoying each other's company as much as one might like, but the fact is they got it done. And I think that uh, we ought to consider using that model today. You know, as recently as 2007, we were actually quite close to a balanced budget. Our deficit was just over 1% of our total economy, as opposed to today, where it's nearly 10% of our total economy. And by the way, I fully acknowledge that we can't get there overnight, as much as many of us would like to. We've dug a deep hole. We're borrowing almost 40 cents of every dollar we spend. And it would be too sudden and draconian to think that we could balance that budget overnight. And so we've suggested a path that might take eight or nine or 10 years to actually reach a balance. But it would surely put us on a path that would get us there. And that would be enormously constructive, not only in the sense that it would assure the long-term fiscal viability of our country, which is in and of itself an absolutely vital goal, but it would also create some certainty in the market, reduce the risk of huge inflation and huge interest rates and the other dangers that accompany irresponsibly large deficits, and in the process, help to encourage stronger economic growth and job creation. Um, I think we ought to be flexible in how we get there. We've proposed one way. It's not the only way to do it, but, it's Im but it importantly is premised on this principle that we can reach a balance and we ought to do that. I think it's absolutely critical that we demonstrate that we have the political will and the ability to tackle this, arguably the biggest challenge that we face. You know, we've seen what's been unfolding in Europe because they chose not to tackle these problems in recent years. I would suggest that we're not that far behind some of the countries in Europe that are in the middle of truly devastating sovereign debt crises. We're not quite there yet. But if we don't change the path we're on, that is the direction that we're heading. Let me just walk through the uh, particular items in this approach that we're advocating in which we would cut cap and balance. First is to cut spending, and we're suggesting a cut from the 2011 levels of $142 billion. It's actually less than 4% of the amount of money that the government spent last year. Well, we're, we're still in the current year, but the fiscal year 2011. It would still spend more than we spent in 2010. So it's very hard to see how this could be fairly described as any kind of a draconian cut. It's a very modest cut in spending. And by 2012, the levels will be almost half a trillion dollars more than the levels of spending in 2008. But that's the first step, is to cut spending in the immediate future in this next fiscal year. The second is to cap spending over the next several years. And to do this, we've established a set of caps, statutory limits on how much the government could spend each year based on the level of spending in the budget resolution that I introduced on the Senate floor, which had almost all of Republicans' uh, support. I wish we had some Democratic support, and I still 
hope we'll get some. But the important thing about this budget resolution and these cap levels is they reach a balance, not overnight. It takes nine years. But by con controlling spending and adopting pro-growth policies that encourage an expanding economy, we would, following these cap levels, be able to balance our budget. And then finally, we're advocating that as part of this package, as part of an arrangement by which we would agree to raise the debt ceiling, we would also pass in both the House and the Senate a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution and send it off to the states. We would not suggest that the increase in the debt limit be contingent upon state adoption, but I'm confident that the states would, in fact, pass a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution if we here in Congress would send it to them. It would have three big features, and again, the details of these things ought to be a, a subject of discussion. One that wouldn't be open for negotiation would be the first, outlays need to equal revenues. That is obviously the fundamental definition of a balance. You don't run deficits, you make sure that you spend no more than what you take in. The second thing that some of us feel strongly about, and I'm one of them, we ought to limit spending as a percentage of our economy so that the government doesn't keep growing at the expense of the private sector, which is exactly what happens when the government occupies too large a segment of our economy. And finally, we've advocated that we not create a mechanism that simply guarantees big tax increases in order to balance the budget. And to do that, we would like, and, and we have included, a supermajority requirement to raise taxes so that a simple majority wouldn't be enough. It would require a supermajority, which would only occur presumably in truly extraordinary circumstances. See, I believe very strongly that we can have strong economic growth and the job creation that we need. But to get there, we've got to create an environment here in Washington. We've got to pass legislation and create an environment that encourages risk taking, encourages business formation, encourages new hiring. And we haven't been doing such a good job on that. One of the ways to do that is to put us on a sustainable, viable fiscal path. And the cut cap and balance approach does that. We would raise the debt limit by the full amount the president has asked for, provided that he agree with us to put this country on a path to a balanced budget. I don't think that's asking too much. I think that is a way to achieve long-term fiscal sustainability. And just as importantly, it's a way to create an environment for the strong economic growth and job creation that we need. Madam President, uh, <laughs> Mr. President, sorry about that. I uh, suggest the absence of a quorum. Mr. President. Mr. President. Senator from Florida. Mr. President.